So this is the this is like a science fiction to me. So you know, we have these three by five cards. How come we can't take these three by five cards and turn them into acceptance tests? Because this is what the user asked for. The user said, "This is what I want, and if you'll just do that, it'll make me happy." So you've reached upon that. And so, well, how are you going to do that? These things are in English, right? <laughs> how are you going to turn that? We don't have natural language understanding systems yet, so this seems like impossible. Uh, and then, even if you could do that. Don't you have to have a person sitting there pushing the buttons every time to, to test your user interface? Okay. So this is the, what Cucumber is about, is going from this customer-friendly acceptance test, uh, user stories, to get both acceptance tests and integration tests out of them, if you remember that from before. It does this by going halfway in between. So it's, it's still uh, not code, it's kind of English so that the customer can understand it, Yet it's not completely freeform, so the computer can understand it as well. So this is what a, a user story looks like in Cucumber. So the first thing is called a feature. This is basically what a user story is. So a user can manually add a movie. What you have then is one or more scenarios for each of these user stories. So uh, or, or features, one of the features. And then this is the stylized form of English, but it's still kind of understandable. Given I'm on Rotten Tomatoes homepage, when I follow out a new movie, then I should be on a create new movie page. When I fill in title with Men in Black, and I select PG-13 from rating and press Save Changes, then I should be in the Rotten Tomatoes page, and I should see a Men in Black. So these are three to eight. These are called steps. So we have a feature, which is user story. We have multiple scenarios, typically at least one per feature, and there's steps per scenario. Okay, I think I just said that. Now, what you, uh, where do you put this information away? Well, the, these are keywords feature and scenario, and you keep them in a dot features file within the Rails framework. And now what we need to is take these steps that we've defined, where we've written, these steps that we've written out with these given and when words, uh, then words like that, and we have to map them onto the Ruby code that does the testing, okay? So that's, uh, and th these will be in .rb files. So we have .feature files and .rb files, and we'll have some controller name. So these given steps mean that's the preconditions, the state of the world before you start this story. The when steps are the actions. Somehow we're going to want to push the, the, make the browser, push, that, push those browser buttons. And then the then steps are the consequences, what happens after you do it. And then to make it more readable, there's also conjunctions in there. You can have and and but. So you can have given and this and this and this, or when, then and then, and, uh, and so then and a couple of conditions afterwards. Now, the magic between the steps and the step definitions is you use regular expressions. So we're going to write good old regular expressions, as we talked about earlier. They're going to match those English phrases to map them on to the testing code written in Ruby. So remember the given I am on the Rotten Potatoes homepage. There's our regular expression that's going to match this, and it's going to do that captured string, right? The captured string is over here in parentheses, and it's going to remember that it's the Rotten Potatoes homepage, which we'll probably use in the step definitions. So uh, to use this, as it says in the book, you need to install it like everything else. You install it as a cucumber gem, uh, and it's going to create for you, this kind of, remember, how is Rails so productive? It creates a bunch of things so you don't have to do them. It'll create some commonly used step definitions when you install it. And our model talked before about having test and production and development. It'll, you need a test database to be working with that. And then you're going to edit these .feature files to add features. So what about this other part of the question is, how, who are we going to get to push the buttons? And that is a tool that uh, called Copybara. Now, Copybara, probably nobody in the class knows, but Armando is the world's biggest rat. It's the size of a dog. And that's because the prior tool is called WebRat. So this was even better. This was a big dog, big rat, <laughs> Copybara. So it interacts with the app uh, to receive pages and parses the HTML and submits the forms, just the things that we were talking about, right? Talking about forms. 